Hey, what's up everybody? Wes here. Thanks for tuning in for another video. Today is a very special day because I'm sitting inside my Tacoma and it is pure silent aside from the traffic and nature sounds because we took out this guy. This is the door beeper and every time you don't have your seatbelt on, every time you open your door and try to have music playing, any kind of thing like that that you're trying to do, this thing's just beeping over and over and over at you. Luckily, it's very simple to remove. You're just gonna pop out a few panels and we're gonna pull this off of a board. This is a permanent solution. I know a lot of you guys have tried to find out some workarounds. Some of you reported that your local dealers are able to turn this off. So check with them first. If you don't really mind going through all these steps and uh, you'd rather just go ahead and take it out yourself for a more permanent solution, I'm gonna show you how to do that in this video. So the first step is to remove this plastic trim around the vents here. And to do that, we're just gonna use a set of plastic pry bars, or actually just one of these. I got this set off of Amazon for about five bucks. I'll link those below. It's also got some plastic clip remover here for any kind of retaining clips. So super handy kit, and we're gonna use that to get started. So we'll just take one of our pry bars and put underneath the trim and just kind of give it a twist. It should pop up, you'll hear that, and enough to get your fingers in. And then once you get a good grip on it, just kind of give it a pull. It should come all the way out. It's just held in with some little red clips that you'll see here on the back side of this. My film mount came with it. It's a magnetic mount made by Soch, but I'll, uh, I'll link that below too if you're interested. It's super solid. So just lay it here to the side. Step one complete. Here's what we look like. And then now we just got to get the trim behind the steering wheel off. To do that, do your uh, adjuster here on the bottom so that way you can tilt your steering wheel all the way down and pull it all the way forward as well so if your wheel is telescoping pull it out not in and then kind of lock it back into place and then we're also going to take our knobs here and push those down just to get the most clearance that we can and so reach in this is where i started pulling from it seemed to pull out pretty easily and then just work my way around the top trim and just work these clips out and then all the way till you get to the vent and then just give it a pull and then everything should break free pretty easily and once you're broke free with the steering wheel down, it's still gonna be a little tricky to get around, but just give it a pull and then you're free of this trim piece. That's step number two. And uh, we'll just go ahead and probably put it in the back seat to keep it out of the way. And we'll refer back to this as we're reassembling. Next, we have to remove these four bolts that hold in the speedometer cluster. You can use a Phillips head to pull these out or you can use an eight millimeter socket. That's what I chose to do on this with a short extension. And so go ahead and get these four bolts pulled out. Here's what they look like. Again, they are Phillips head as well, if you prefer. And then we just lean this forward. You'll see too that it's connected on the back, which will just disconnect really easily. There's two main harnesses and then just a safety plug. But right here's that speaker. That's what we're gonna be getting out, or this is the cover for it rather. Um, so we gotta get these plugs here unplugged to get to the back of it. So remove these two harnesses and this right here, just bend it back. It's just a retaining plug. And then you're free on the cluster. Just gently pull it out. Don't crack the plastic or anything like that. And then here's everything in case you ever had to change this out or pull it out for any reason, that was super easy. But what we're gonna do is get into the back of it. Again, that's where that speaker is. And that's the only way we're gonna get this beeping to stop is by removing this black cover. And here's the cavity that it came from. It's pretty clean. Check this out. I don't know if that's an Easter egg, but yeah, it looks like a taco in the back of that truck. But um, so here we go. There's a bunch of little screws around here. And this was a T15 that I used on this. And uh, so just go ahead and remove each of these little screws all around it. And that's gonna basically make it to where you can pull this completely out. You don't have to remove this whole piece right here like I did. If you do, be careful not to get any dust in there. Um, it's gonna be behind your plastic if you do. But these little clips here are what we're gonna remove. So you can pull it all the way out to remove them, or you can just kind of slip it up gently. Um, that way you don't get anything in there and unclip these three clips, and that's gonna let the back loose. And now that we've got that back plate free here, we'll just put it aside, and that's gonna expose the speaker and the overall board here. But this is the speaker right here. This is the problem, and it's very easy to remove. You can see here, it's just got three little plastic legs that it's supported on, and then two wires there that are soldered to the board. So really all that you have to do is just kind of reach in and twist it. I just kind of worked it back and forth briefly. I didn't want to work it too hard, uh, but pretty quickly it popped right off. And then here you go, speaker's completely removed from the board. It took all the wire with it. And now we've got this thing, we can do whatever with it. I'm not gonna keep it, um, but we just gonna go ahead and reverse this whole process and get everything put back together and double check and see what the results are. So step one is to push the back back onto place, let the clips engage, and then we're gonna take these little screws. I didn't show them earlier, but these are the screws that came out from all around this back plate. So we'll go ahead and get those back into place. 
And once they're in place, we're just going to go ahead and take this hold cluster once again, place it back into the empty cavity. But what we're going to do is let, kind of lay it forward. That way we can get the harnesses back into place. Don't forget these, obviously. And they're very easy to put back in. You can't cross them up. They're completely different sizes. So just click them right into place. So here's number one. Take the longer piece, get it clicked into place. And the other one you don't necessarily have to do, but it came this way, so I'm just gonna click it back in. It's that little, that little holder harness. And then now just line everything back up with those holes. It slides right into place, and you can see it really easily. And just reinstall those four bolts. Now that we've got the four bolts installed, we're gonna go back and take that last trim piece that we took off and uh, kind of put it right back around the steering wheel and make sure again that your telescope down and out to give yourself the most room and then just start working the clips back into place. The easiest thing I did was just to start right here on the top. It lined up really nicely and then just start pushing it in around the vents and then uh, just kind of make sure you double check everything. It should click into place really easily. This is the first time I'd ever done this um, and it worked out really well for me. So I think you should be able to pull this off no problem. After you've got that on, the next part is even easier. This part just punches right in. Um, it's pretty cool, this piece. Some people take it off and paint it and do that trim different colors. So this is something you can maybe think about doing while you're doing this modification. But just push here, you'll hear everything clicking into place. And then we are complete on the reinstall. So now's the moment of truth. Everything's in place. We're gonna fire it up and see if we're still beeping. So we've got everything cranked up here and the door's open and it's not beeping. So that definitely fixed the door ajar. I'll let you know a few things here that I did find out with this um, beeper being removed. Uh, nothing that I seemed concerned about personally, but here I am uh, riding up the road, seatbelt light flashing. So it's definitely took care of the seatbelt beeping, um, the door ajar beeper. Um, something else that it also did was it took away the clicking of the turn signal. This wasn't a deal breaker for me. I actually really liked it, but if it's something that you're concerned with, definitely consider that before removing the speaker. Uh, another thing I was worried about was that it might mess up the alarm if you're running up on someone, the beeping, but if you are about to make impact, it does still beep from somewhere else. That's a separate beeper. And the last thing I noticed is that if your headlights are on, it flashes at you with that little symbol and it says headlights on, but it's not going to beep at you. So it takes care of that beeper. So just something to keep in mind, you do want to make sure you don't leave your headlights on. Um, if that's going to be an issue for you, don't remove the speaker. And here's a little tip for you, you may or may not know. If you turn your speedometer here, it, it turns your brightness on your display up and down. That's something I didn't realize before doing this. And another very useful thing that you can do is to go to your setup. And then when you're in setup under general, you can click here on the beep and it turns this beep on and off for your truck. So I turned that off as well. Um, that's playing through the speaker. Something else that's really cool you can do is go to vehicle and then vehicle customization and then door lock settings. Once you're in there, you can scroll down to lock unlock feedback tone and that's going to allow you to change the volume up or down on your lock and unlock tone right here. So sometimes it's set really high. If you'd rather turn it off, you can turn it off or you can turn it way up so you can completely adjust that. But again, I hope you really enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, please leave those in the comments below. I'll definitely get back to you as soon as possible. I've got a few more uh, upgrades planned for this truck in the near future. We're looking at doing a three and a half inch lift, some uh, gas hood struts, some different cool projects. So if you like the channel, definitely consider subscribing and I hope to see you next time. All right, peace.